Describe the type of natural environment you would like to have in place when your grandchildren's grandchildren are born. What will you do in government to contribute to that reality? And there have been several questions here related to that and to some of the recent um, announcements to Michelle. Do you agree with your federal leader that there's too much land locked up in national parks? No. <laughs> I'm not sure. So, and there's a, a number around that, but, but the idea of a long-term vision for grandchildren's grandchildren. Premier first? Oh, sorry. Well, um, to be able to do some of the things that we were able to do when we were little, like, as you say, going down to creeks and playing them and finding tadpoles and seeing some of the natural environment actually restored. Now, uh, it is amazing how resilient the natural environment can be. Uh, we've seen, uh, just in recent times, some of the things that are occurring in the River Murray uh, with some flows being restored there. Of course there's lots of damage and there are some things which perhaps have been irreparably changed, but restoring as much of our natural environment as we can, protecting obviously species from further degradation and extinction, but also much of our vision set out in the document that we've produced and some of you I hope have, is about inviting the community and in particular our young people to be part of and experience our natural environment. Our Nature Play initiative is all about ensuring that young people grow up with a sense of wonder and love of our natural environment. Not only does that good for themselves and their well-being and allows them to develop and learn, it also gives a, a, a group of citizens that will value and be prepared to uh, support and protect our natural environment, that become the custodians of our natural environment in the future. So my vision is for a community that is much more connected with its natural environment, uh, is able to enjoy and um, experience it uh, in a way which is so much more part of their daily lives. In that way, the growing support for it gives us the political permission to obtain the resources necessary to take the steps to protect, preserve, and in some cases, restore the damage that we've all done. Thank you. Michelle. Thanks, Chris, and, and thanks for the question. And if I can just address the, the issue of what the Prime Minister said the other day, I kind of it was a bit of a WTF moment for me. Um, so can I just put distance between that? And in any case, the uh, decisions about whether um, parks uh, are within the system is entirely the one for the state government, and that will remain so. Um, vision for future generations, well, I think, um, and I refer to a fair bit of it in my speech to restoration of landscapes and people understanding uh, ecosystems and so forth. I think literacy, uh, environmental literacy within our community and education is really important. And um, the Premier mentioned Nature Play and we, uh, Ian Hunter um, launched that recently, which I think is a, a really fabulous initiative. Just for people to try and understand how the natural environment works. I think once you give people the tools, they naturally uh, want to be involved. So at a very basic level, whether it's all you know school kids um, being involved in creek restoration um, or, or families going down to their local park and planting the endemic local species, I think for, for that to be really embedded within uh, the community at, at a very knowledgeable level, there are people who pick it up along the way. And I talk about the Helico Conservation Park um, volunteers. I mean, Trevor, who took me around in his four-wheel drive, is a, a former banker, and he was, you know, talking fluently about direct seeding. He's been collecting local native provenance. He's gone to adjacent parks and collected them. He's learned an enormous amount, and just through that process, uh, he's really assisted in in the restoration of that landscape. So, that sort of knowledge, uh, really deeply embedded in our community, so that we are restoring landscapes and and bringing things back from, from the brink and into healthy numbers is, is what I'd like to see. It's, it's happening on a scale. I think the last couple of generations of people, I talked about the whole previous attitude people have. I mean, for goodness sake, the South Australian government 50 years ago or 100 years ago used to pay people to clear land. It's just, it's just a complete shift in consciousness. And I think once we reach that, then we'll be really winning the battle. Thank you very much.